Okay, welcome back. Uh, it's still the run-up. Um, we did promise that when we return, we're going to bring someone who will talk about what is happening in a number of states. Um, it's just sitting governor versus uh, an ex -governor, ex governor ex-governor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ludo has been in the news. Uh, depending on which side you are, uh, for good reason or for bad reason, if you are on one side, you, he could be in the news for good reason, and you are on the other side, he could be in the news for bad reason. <laughs> but <laughs> one of the things that trended a few, a few hours ago, so to speak, is uh, that the Igbo, Apex Igbo Cultural uh, Group, or Haneze Ndibo, has taken uh, <laughs> Soludo not to court, not to the village square, but to the deities, <laughs> like this one don't pass our power. <laughs> and so everybody was talking about it. Mm. But we were wondering, how big is this issue that will make a social cultural group like Ohanes and Dibo take someone to the deities? Uh, but they have come out to give a statement that suggests otherwise. And uh -huh. there's a long press release. Maybe you can I'm, help I'm us. I'm going to try In fact, and, help us. Uh, you know, drop a few parts of it. Uh, part of the press release drafted by the President General of Ohaneze Ndibo reads as follows. He says, the attention of Ohaneze Ndibo worldwide has been drawn to a bizarre and reckless publication currently circulating in the media, suggesting that the apex Igbo social, uh, social cultural body and by extension Ndibo have dragged Governor Soludo to the two famous divinities and deities, uh, Chokoleze in Umbise and Ubinu Babi in Arochuku for his unreasonable public behavior adding that the sanctions against Soludo to face Igbo deities will serve as a deterrent to Southeast politicians who have been hired by enemies of Ndibo and Nigerians to derail the obese presidency come 2023. The Ohanez Ndibo Worldwide, led by an erudite scholar and a seasoned diplomat, Ambassador Professor George Obiozo, C-O-N, who uh, would have ignored the said press release, but silence in this circumstance will tend to give the validity to such a fallacy by the unsuspecting public. And for the avoid avoidance of doubt, Ohanez Ndibo has never contemplated consultations with the deities in seeking solutions for the Igbo dilemma. The Igbo are proudly, uh, profoundly endowed in various ways, least of which is a resort to deities for contemporary issues. It needs to be added that on November 15, 2020, the National Executive Committee of Ohanez Ndibo held a meeting presided over by Obiozo. Uh, the issue of the place of the Igbo in in 2023 was elaborately discussed wherein Obiozo stated and in quote having traversed the length and breadth of the country on an advocacy mission for the emergence of a president of Nigeria from the southeast zone in the 2023 general elections we expected a positive outcome but the two major political parties, APC and PDP, rejected with impunity and impudence the practice and convention of the last 20 years of rotation and zoning of office of the president. However, the emergence of Mr. Peter Obi as of today has fulfilled all the expectations of Ndibo to participate in the 2023 presidential elections, which includes winning the primaries of the party and being nominated as the presidential candidate of the party. This is the advice given to all Igbo contestants in the 2023 presidential election, which is appropriate by virtue of justice, equity, and fairness. The whole country knows this to be the truth, and the whole world knows this to be the fact. Of all of them are watching events in Nigeria, either with uh, trepidation or doubt. Obiozo concluded with, the situation in the country today offers Ndibo the opportunity to relaunch themselves in all social political dimensions. He added that yet we must keep asking the rest of Nigerians what, they, what do they really want to do with Ndibo. Uh, the decision will be theirs and the response will be ours. In other words, the position of Ohanez and Ibo and of course the Ibos with respect to 2023 is a constant. We rather used the opportunity to thank all the eminent Nigerians that have lent their support or thrown their weight behind the cause of justice 
equity, unity, progress, and corporate existence of Nigeria in the person of Mr. Peter Obi. For Hanez and Dibo, it is either one is with us or against us, but never will Nigerians be distracted since history beckons. Uh, for several years to come, it will be recorded as once upon a time, Ndibo were shortchanged in the political calculations of Nigeria, and Mr. Peter Obi from Anambra State braved up to change the narratives and that he was able to fill the Nigerian expectations. All the dynamics and intrigues associated with the above scenario will form the essential component of the Igbo history. Ohanese once more informs that the Secretary General of Ohanese Ndibo Worldwide is Ambassador OK, Emuche, MFR, and any, other, any claim to the uh, contrary are mischief makers, impostors, uh, charlatans, social climbers, and, social, and those media navigators who leech on the invaluable footprints of Ohanese Ndibo to issue press releases for a narrow, perverse, and illicit pecuniary interest. It is a very, oh dear God. very I was, I was going long to say you, read. You, you need like four liters of water right now. <laughs> but then, <laughs> yeah. I, I think they made, the, you know, the major points that we're trying to point out, the fact that they, they actually didn't take uh, Governor Saludo to mm. <laughs> the deities yeah. as, as, you know, was being circulated in the news and social media at, at least 24 hours it, ago. It really sounded weird, you know, the they were social cultural group I'm sure they will have a lot of Christians in it. Mm -hmm. They will have yeah, traditional uh, religion practitioners. They might even also have Muslims within it. Mm -hmm. Igbo is Igbo different Muslim from Muslims. religion. So I was wondering, it was so weird that uh, the, a governor will be taken to the deity's house. Like, I, I was talking will they tie to... palm fronts to him and then push him to the deity? What was going to happen? Anyway. Yeah, I was talking to an elder Igbo statesman yesterday, or day before yesterday, I can't remember, and he said something. He said that we were first Igbo before any other religion. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be nice, you know, just stemming from what you just said about how that there are other people practicing mm -hmm. other religions, mm -hmm. but are members of the Igbo social yeah. uh, cultural group. So it wouldn't make sense, actually, you know, to do that. It's a good thing that they came out with this statement and also, you know, um, also stating where they stand mm -hmm. you know that 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 makes it even stronger for me yes it, it gives uh, the opportunity for them to lend a voice a, a lot of people have said uh and i said this because i've seen it a lot of places the problem of the igbos are igbos mm -hmm. and by this statement it seems clear that um it's it's um imagined that the Igbo man does not support an Igbo man. Oh, but, you know, with this, they have stated their full support. Mm -hmm. So, well, they didn't take, they didn't take Soludo to the cleaners. <laughs> we now know who they support, uh, or to the deities, rather. Uh, we now know who they support. We know also that from these, even though they didn't mention it, it is, even if it's a fight, it's a fight between two sons, mm -hmm. illustrious sons of Igbo land, and they wouldn't wash dirty linens in the public, in public. As, as it were, <laughs> but uh, the public should know this. But this also goes on to say how we believe hook, line, and sinker mm -hmm. uh, whenever there is news on the social media. It may not be as true as it is, and you need to do some investigations and ask the relevant questions. Otherwise, you might just be spreading falsehood, which is very dangerous sometimes. Is, which is why it is important to do your fact checking. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know, I might also want to say this, from whatever was said about the investments made by OB, you might also need to go and do your own fact checking. Go and verify. Yes, so verify and find out for yourself and know if it's really worth nothing or if it is worth something. Uh, someone has come out on social media to say, if it's really worth nothing, he wants to buy it for 10 million. Yeah. <laughs> and when an Igbo man speaks, you know, there is money in the air. <laughs> now, I might just n need to go back and check everything I have posted in my life uh, on Twitter or everywhere else. Because, <laughs> because the excavation, I would say, that of, is going on. of Soludo's comments and before videos, now, yes. uh, Obi's comments, everybody's comments Even that will relate to this thing. Comments yes. are on social media. Everything now. concerning this matter has been dug up and videos are flying around saying what was said before now and how the situation now has influenced what is being said mm -hmm. uh, nowadays. So 
whatever you do in the days of social, <laughs> social media, media be careful forget. because tomorrow <laughs> those things might come back to testify against or for you mm -hmm. in this case i don't know who is winning the battle but um it just advises us somehow for tomorrow I, to an extent or it's not only to an extent i feel like it's not even a battle like it's an exchange of opinions i mean your opinion can change from what it used to be two three years ago about a certain topic i'm not even being direct right now but i, I feel like everybody has the right to express what their opinion as of now is and i, I think that is what soludo is doing D don't look at me that way <laughs> <laughs> Why would it i mean he has the right to express what mm -hmm. his opinions are i just what i would say is even when you're expressing your opinions, get mm -hmm. your facts right. Yeah, because um, superior arguments can always win. Mm -hmm. So if I find, for instance, if I belong to a particular religion and another person comes to offer me another religion and gives me better facts, it's not for me to <coughs> condemn the one I'm leaving, but mm -hmm. I will tell you why I, I to have decided forward. to move yes. to the other place. So, like, well... We now know that our guest is uh, standing by, and we'd just like to usher him in, Dr. Ezekwesili. Hello and welcome to the program, Dr. Ezekwesili. Ezekwesili. Hmm? Dr. Ezekwesili. Oh, Ezekwesili. Hello. Hello, good morning. I can hear you, my sister. How are you? I'm very fine. You're welcome. Okay, I'm trying to find a, a better place to hear, but I'm in a traffic... Uh, yeah, okay, but let's go ahead with your question. Yes, since we can hear you loud and clear, it's fine the way you are. Um, we just want to give validity to, to what we have been hearing. Uh, we've heard on the one hand that the entire Igbo, Igbo nation took uh, the governor to deities because of statements he made about another son of Igbo uh, extraction, Peter B. And when we've also seen a press release uh, by the Ohanese Ndigbo stating that they never did that and also giving their position where they stand in 2023. Uh, that is in the road leading to 2023, as it were. But just give us, authenticate whatever news that we should know uh the press release has been given but let's hear from you from the horse's mouth you are there on ground and you are a stakeholder what really happened i'm still online yes what happened yeah. go ahead uh soludo versus obi that's how we are calling it uh, what really happened Okay, I'm in Enugu, and um, Enugu is very close to Anambra State. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yes. Okay. Um, what is happening really is a, a kind of disappointment when you consider the kind of personality that Soludo constitutes. A professor, for that matter, of many years standing, one-time governor of uh, CBN, uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, and when we all saw his arrival on that seat as the governor of Anambra State as a welcome development, within the first two weeks, he was able to correct a statement against the indigenous people of Biafra that had their activities abetted in the course of his uh, uh, campaign and the election. As far as I'm concerned, and as a man, what is coming up from that seat by him is not welcomed at all. I am seeing a dear personality here, a professor of high academic standard, and a governor who is, uh, whose character has become divergent to the opinion people held of him. Peter B has become a sacrosanct personality, as far as we are concerned, and uh, every iota of statement made against him. It's like a statement being made to the capital powers of Nigeria, the poor people of Nigeria, the downtrodden, the rejected, the cannot stood. So what is happening between that Soludo professor and our dear brother Peter Odu is not a welcome development at all. Yeah. Yeah. Hanes Ndipo has released a statement, you know, uh, saying that 
stating their stand, uh, just as my co-host has said, uh, as concerning the 2023 general elections. Uh, but this is like a back and forth between, it's like a family thing now, because it, it's the, Ibo, the apex Igbo social cultural group and their two sons going back and forth. Do you think there is going to be you know, any further move to bring everybody home and have a proper conversation concerning this, this uh, issue? matter. One thing I want to believe, I want to tell you that um, P2B, as he is today in the Nigerian central politics, is not just an Igbo man. Hmm. And any attempt to affix him to the Igbo nation is not going to go well. Peter has become a Nigerian project. P2B is a movement. Because the ideology he is uh, offering is not easily accessible to those of them who are fighting to occupy that sacred seat, number one seat in Nigeria. So P2B is not some, don't, don't talk about him as an Igbo man when we begin to talk about Nigerian politics. He's a project, he's a movement, and you can see that everybody's following him. Now, Soludo, from his action sir? now, is trying to reclude himself, remove himself from the central approach to the governance of Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, he needed to ask questions. Hmm. And a, a, a person like him does not need to talk too much. P2B has often told people to go and verify. It takes about 40, 50 minutes from Enugu to Anambra. Even when we had the election, Anambra had the election that brought up Professor Sumido, the effect which the campaign and the election was having in Anambra was the first very much felt in Enugu. Who are here praying, praying for him, believing that when he comes, he wants to neutralize all those negative forces that were in place. So, what is going to really affect the man's standing and the affairs of Afga as number one evil political party? Yes, it will have an effect on what the uh, Professor Charles Toludo represents. Yes, because I know. As far as he's making this statement, he's on his own. He's on his own. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, well, uh, are, are we, you getting me? Yeah. Yes. We will yeah. have to. We'll have to take a moment now so that we can take the news and hope that uh, uh, after the news we can reconnect with you to finish some of the questions that are, are left hanging here. For instance, some of the uh, people or the governors in the southeast are vehemently opposed to the candidacy of Peter Obi if, like uh, Uche just asked you now, if there is a conversation around bringing home everybody to be on the same page. Uh, Dr. Charles, are you there? I'm there, standing by. All right. Uh, before we went on the, on the news, you were talking about how that, you know, uh, Peter Obi is a Nigerian project and... We, I, I was trying to tell you that I understand that part. I mean, the obedience has scattered everywhere on social media and even on the regular media. But then uh, this conversation that we're having with you stemmed up from the, the things, uh, statements that were made by the governor of Anambra State, uh, Charles Soludo, and the counter statement made by the Igbo Apex Social Cultural Group, the Ohanes and Igbo, which is why, uh, you know, we're not trying to box Peter Obi into the Southeasterner that he is, but we're trying to have the conversation in the home front, you know, from the home front. Uh, what, what, that was why we asked you what you think, you know, the way forward is going to be like having the conversation with from the point of the Johannes and Debo, bringing their two sons together and having the conversation like a family. You know, that was where yeah. we were coming from. Yes, and then I, I, I said uh, some okay, some I governors in the... By the studio managers, because they have some... Okay. Really that to to we also... We, we also asked you, um, some uh, governors in the southeast, uh, making some comments showing that they are uh, opposed to the candidacy of another Igbo son, not necessarily an Igbo candidate as it were, but like you have said, but Peter will be 
the governors of the Southeast making comments to show that they are opposed to his candidacy, uh, presidential candidacy. And the question was, is there a move that everybody in the nearest future will be brought to the same table to be on the same page, or is all man to himself, God for all? Okay, if I understand your question well, I, I want to let you know that the governors of the southeastern states um, are followers of uh, the operational oligarchy in the country. They are, as far as I'm concerned, the government in the southeastern states are operating on a different plane than away from what governors are doing. Mm. And the reasons are very simple. If a man is an individualistic person, he is a liberalist, he determines what he wants to do, and he assiduously follows the footsteps and does what he wants to do. But given the current situation in the country, we are facing a common enemy. Enemy of hunger. Enemy of oligarchy. Enemy of uh, people who deny to restitute all they have stolen from us. So you find out that the people who are being governed are on one page. Those who are governing us are on their own page. That is just the truth. I am surprised at, by, by, by the steps taken by the gov current government of Anambra State. Before now, we were thinking we were on the part of the matching. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Mm. Are you hearing me? We're, we're hearing you. We can hear you. We're listening. So what I'm trying to say, in effect, is that it's not going to be very easy for, for, for us to be on the same page with those, who, with those of them who are governing us. But the common truth is that we have found the truth. And we have found the way. The course being charted by the presidential candidate of the uh, Labour, Labour Party is different from what is going on. Mm. His ideas are so simplistic, straightforward, and to the point. And we find out that the common masses this way are on the same page with him. If you begin to think about what hired people are saying about it will be, they are not saying it on behalf of people. people. I am telling you the truth. If you followed what the manager and arm of the said, it was even saying that they are prepared to take those of them who are trying to paint people with black for the shrine. And you know the implication of taking the people through the processes of the deity. It's condemnation. The Igbo man is traditional. He is a traditionalist. He believes in his destiny and step of his ancestors. What is happening now? The divine operation. P2B is a project. P2B is a movement. If you come to Enugu State, where I am now, I had the opportunity of listening to the leaders of that party, that Labour Party, talk about infiltration from the ruling party to scatter what they have. Because these people who are on foot do not want to go out. They don't want to be removed. But this time around, the divine hand is against them. Can I go on, sir? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it, it's really interesting. Um, Oanez Ndibo is taking a stand, and everybody is taking a, their stand. And you have talked about the fact that uh, they governed are uh, different from uh, their governors. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that relationship will will be now. I don't know what it is that um, uh, you intend to do to keep the people who are governed on one uh, one page and the people who are governing on another page. Yeah, but that would be the next question because, um, Dr. Charles, you can hear me. I'm listening to you. Okay, that would be the next question because uh, we, we, in, the, in, the, in the past we've seen uh, groups and political parties and, you know, come together to, um, you know, uh, try and have conversations with, the, with their aggrieved members. I don't know if the 
the southeastern governors have made their points clear on why they are not very supportive about the candidacy of Peter Obi. But do you see a point where there is going to be a meeting to, you know, uh, uh, quench these grievances and get everybody to be on the same page? Well, those of you are saying if they can come to the same page with the people. But I know innately and individually among them, they know the truth. Mm. Are you getting me? I won't be surprised if at the end of the day, they decide to throw the line of the market. It may not be a surprise to me. Are you getting me? Yeah. They may, at the end of the day, return to the focus where the masses are looking at. Yes. So it is going to be very important if they can decide to do that because like I said, what is happening now never happened in the history of Nigerian politics. Okay. There what is happening things. now never happened before in Nigerian politics. Yes. Uh, and if you ever had the opportunity of listening to people, he made this point one after the other. And you don't need to ask questions or go to the library to conduct research to find out whether he's saying what he's saying is true. On this occasion, it will be a pleasant thing if the governor can make a new point. I know individually some of them know the, the, the effect, what's going to be the effect of what they are doing if they continue, if they continue on, that, on, that, on that line. There are two, there are two yes. things, uh, Dr. Charles, that, that went on, yes. that one of them has been debunked now by um, Hanez Ndigbo. The first is that they took Soludo to the deities. I know Hanez Ndigbo has said, this is not what happened, but they have taken a stand, okay. and we have been made to know what that stand is. The second thing that also went wild, uh, sort of, was that uh, they were, the people, the stakeholders in the Southeast are threatening that the governor, Soludo, might just have to serve only one tenor. Did this thing also happen? Just finally, uh, before we go. You're very correct. If we follow what is happening, it is obvious that two of these governors, two, let me nominate them, them might not have the opportunity of returning to seat after their tenure. And uh, coming to the issue of Ohaneze, you know Ohaneze is a, is, a, is a tribal umbrella body. It's a national body for the Igbo. Uh, it is not going to be very good for them to get so much in-depth involved into the political, because everybody, about two or three Igbo people are trying to occupy this uh, number one national seat. So it won't be good in the name of Ohaneze, they begin to endorse one person. But that doesn't preclude, it doesn't remove the knowledge that we both are one as far as the P2B project is concerned. Have I made my point clear? Yes, you have made your point clear. And we'd like to thank okay. you at this point for uh, sharing your thoughts and giving us situation report as it were from the East. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming much. on you, the sir. program. Yes. I think next time we shall be on this room together. Okay, that will be so good. We are looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so there it is. Very um, passionate speech. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but one thing I liked is that he said, no matter how much we would like to look at Peter Obi as an Igbo man, yeah. Peter Obi is a project, a Nigerian project. Mm -hmm. not, and that's one thing I like about the politics going on right now. Um, even though some people we know are using the regional card, they are mm -hmm. playing the regional card, we still see them preaching the gospel of the oneness of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and that's a good thing for me. So if we are voting for people, it's not because they come from where we a come from, case, but yes. because we align with the kind of ideologies that they are putting forward. It may not be OB, it may not be any other person that we are even calling now. 2023 might just surprise us and throw up a candidate that we never thought about <laughs> <laughs> because everybody will be fighting everybody else and someone just speaks it. Hmm. But like Obi said one day, uh, when he was being interviewed, that when they told him that to, to win, for him to win is going to be a miracle. And he said, well, everything about me is a miracle. So <laughs> if I win, it will just be one of them. One of so the maybe miracles. there will be one person, one miracle that God is going to throw to us. But at the end of the day, this is our Nigeria. And uh -huh. we are praying that 2023 really defines Nigeria and puts it 
in a very, very good footing. And we can, you know, make uh, motivational statements mm. as much as we want. But if you do not have your PVC and you do not come out to vote and participate, we might still be telling the same story for the next eight years. So get your PVCs and cast your vote wisely. That's mm. all I can say. Well, until we meet again tomorrow for another edition of the run-up, stay fit, stay healthy, and be patriotic. My name is Nyamgul Agadji. Thanks for being there. And I am Uche Chuku Onodo. Stay watching Plus TV.